Okay, we are streaming on YouTube and the recording is paused on Zoom right now. So whenever anybody's ready, let me know. Thanks, Mary Jo. We got a couple minutes, so thank you so much. Thank you. All right, I have six o'clock um, by my time. It looks like everyone's here. Just double check. Okay, the live recording has started. I just sent a message to Andy. I, was like, I don't see Andy on here. Yeah. Is he the only one? That's the only council okay. member. All right. Give him one second and then we'll go ahead and jump into it. He's logging in now, he says. There he is. All right, Andy, are you with us? It says connecting to audio still. Okay, he should be here with us now. Or he okay. should be able to hear us. All right, there he, is. there he is. All right, good evening, everyone. Thanks for being part of our work session. So tonight we are going to uh, discuss the audiovisual um, needs for the new council chambers as well as go over some of the uh, interior designs that we've uh, seen over the last couple of weeks. And so um, that's our objective for tonight. So at this time, I'll turn it over to the mayor and she can uh, go in the order in any way that they've discussed previously. So mayor, go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, well, you touched on it, Ron. You all should have received um, a worksheet from HEPI that outlines the audiovisual. And Kyle, do you, do you want to start with that first? Actually, we were thinking we'd, we'd go through kind of the quick uh, renderings of the um, uh, of the council chambers itself that okay. we kind of point out the elements and then lead into the. Okay, take it away then. All right. Recording. Recording. 
All right, so let's. Uh, I'm going to walk uh, walk everyone through the, uh, the council chambers as we um, get them designed. So. We've got some bad sound coming over the bow. Can everyone still hear me? Yeah, you're pretty cloudy. No, I can't hear anymore. Yeah, hold on one second while we adjust some settings here. Everybody else, make sure you're muted, please. All right, let's try this now. All right, so I'm going to walk uh, through everyone through the council chamber. This is starting, um, obviously, standing in the back of the council chambers, um, looking toward the dais. We've got the dais up front here. We have the two side tables um, over here, and then the chairs uh, for, for the audience, as well as a lectern on this side. And some of the things that we've done from a design standpoint, um, taking into the comments and the, uh, the considerations for acoustics, we've highlighted the dais area with the wood paneling with the backdrop of a, what it's, it's a quartz um, stone panel as the backdrop itself. We continue this wood paneling as Wayne's coat along either side of the council chambers. And then to add some texture and add some depth to it and some materiality to it, we've added the acoustic panels. These are fabric lined acoustic panels that go along the entire sides um, of the chambers itself and kind of frame out and use, as you'll see as we, Turn to the back, it starts to line up with some of the elements on the rear of the uh, of the dais itself. Um, from a material standpoint, we've got a, a carpet tile, a dark blue carpet tile for the flooring, with to uh, coordinate with the with the wood paneling. The desks itself um, are a combination of the ports that you see back here, bringing those elements um, into these two side desks, along with the wood paneling. That again. To, with the idea that all these things will coordinate. As we move up, we're showing a lectern here. We envision this lectern as a piece of furniture that can be moved out of the way um, when need be, but then placed uh, when necessary. There'll be floor boxes, which will be able to provide power and data um, to this piece of furniture, which he will go into uh, more detail in a little bit. On the side walls, we've got two sets of 65 inch TVs on either side, mounted on rotating arms. Um, that way the people in the audience can view what you'll be viewing on your screens as you sit up on the dais. So walking over to the dais, again, it's raised. The dais desk itself will have a trough. This is where the area is. You'll be able to hide um, data outlets, power outlets, or anything that you need to plug into. You'll have access to power and data right there. And then also a place for the screens um, that you'll be viewing as people are making presentations. Looking back out toward the audience, again, bringing that wood accent, um, that volumetrically matches the quartz accent on the back of the uh, on the back of the dais. This now becomes kind of the focal piece and becomes um, you know that major design element on the back of the dais, framing the glass elements that go out to the mezzanine and out to the lobby itself. You can see the acoustic paneling wrapping around um, on either side of the wall, and we've added a large clock on the back of the dais, um, and then incorporating the latest Brooklyn, uh, City of Brooklyn branding uh, on this wall as well. The furniture we envision, these are uh, standalone chairs um, with the upholstered and padded back and seat. And then we envision this as a complementary wood um, as well to match the wood paneling uh, throughout, the, throughout the day as itself. The ceiling is a, um, a kind of a, an auditorium type ceiling, using this as a way to help with the acoustics in the space with lighting uh, in between um, these pans. Uh, 
And that is a uh, summary of um, where we are with the current design of the council chambers. Are there any questions regarding materiality? Um, anything like that before we turn it over to Hebe to talk about some of the technology? May I be recognized? Yes. Is this um, an accurate representation of the color of the wood? Yes, it's a fairly accurate representation. It's a, it's not a real dark wood. It's also not a real blonde light wood. Um, something that's going to age well over time. Um, again, we didn't want something too dark, um, too old fashioned looking. And we have we can provide physical samples as well. We have them here in our office. Okay, and the acoustic tiles on the walls, it looks like they may have some dimension to them, at least in the renderings, is that accurate? Yeah, so it will be a fabric um, wrapped uh, acoustic panel. Um, you can see there's a reveal pattern to kind of coordinate with the reveal pattern of the wood back here. And yes, it will have some dimension to it. And um, I don't know if this is a part for the technology or not, but, um, well, I'll, I'll wait for that because it was covered more in the technology. Um, I do prefer the wood used as the accents, like as a focal point in the front and the back. And I also do prefer the wood um, in the, how it's shown in the lobby in the uh, most recent renderings. I think it also add, really adds something to the lobby area. Um, if there are no other questions, um, Tim, are we going to, I'm sorry, are we going to, are we going to go out and look at the lobby in a second after we do this or yeah. are, are you, okay, no, go ahead. If you were going to do the other thing first, that's fine, but Let, we can take a quick look at the lobby. Okay. Um, so again, as, as you walk in, the first thing you'll notice when you walk into the lobby is this wood element. This wood element is obviously the same element that anchors the rear of the, um, of the council chambers itself and incorporating some signage with the latest um, branding for the city of Brooklyn. So as you walk into the lobby, as you turn this way, you've got the reception um, area for City Hall, the monumental stair leading up to uh, the second floor of the City Hall offices. This then leads you into the community room that anchors the, uh, the corner of the building. Walking down this way, will lead you to the um, window for the building department itself. This is the elevator leading up to uh, the second floor and then some of the back of house offices. From a material standpoint, we are carrying some of these same wood accents that you would find in the council chambers to create the desk for the reception area. And then as well, to create some of the accent for the area at the um, clerk of courts. And we are using tile uh, for the main material, main flooring material in the lobby itself. The vestibule will have a walk-off tile mat. Um, and then the stair itself, again, picking up the same wood accents that you would find in the council chambers and the reception desk and creating that in the, um, in the treads for the stair. So the stair itself, um, walking, it takes you up to the second floor, but also creates as it extends out toward the community room, a small area for seating. And then briefly up into the second floor, carrying that same tile um, and the walkway that matches the lobby itself, and then past the elevator, then transitioning to a carpet tile. And uh, Kyle, Kyle, I'm sorry to interrupt. I thought that uh, you were going to do carpet on the top floor because of acoustics. We went back and forth on this and we agreed that it's not a huge area and we're not expecting a lot of foot traffic from one side to the other. And from a visual standpoint, standing right here, seeing the tile on the second floor, seeing the tile on the lower floor, felt connected the two spaces together. And where we're gonna have more foot traffic back in here was the appropriate place to place the tile um, in there. And then, the conference room on the end here will obviously have the carpet uh, as well. Okay, thank you. Are we gonna, this evening, are we gonna see any of the other 
um, interior spaces? Uh, this model just has the lobby space and the uh, council chambers. Okay, when will we get to see the other interior spaces? Are there particular interior spaces that, that you'd like us to focus on first as far as uh, rendering? Well, I mean, is it, is, I mean, just in general, is there more that's available now or you have to develop it still? Well, so it's, we would have to develop it to this level of rendering. Okay. Well, the, the, I think that, you know, the offices will all sort of look the same. Um, you know, looking at the carpet samples and the furniture, which is still in development. Uh, we just started furnitures and fixtures. So you're going to have most of the space look a lot alike. Um, so I think that's why he's trying to get some direction. Maybe if you want to see what the bathrooms are going to look like or any odd spaces off that aren't offices. I mean, I guess for me personally, as these are developed, I, I think it's important for us to see what they look like. I understand your point, Mayor, about that right now it would just look like a room. Um, I guess the, the community room, um, maybe what the restrooms are going to look like, um, the, you know, I guess just as it becomes available, just to keep us in the loop, please. Could I ask one question before we move to the, the AV? Um, the renderings that we had before, um, whenever we did not have the wood in the lobby, what was that material? It was like a darker gray. Um, so we, there were some areas where we had a dark gray paint. Uh, it was just a, yeah, I think it was, just, those previous renderings just had paint colors and it was not okay. a wood. It, yeah, it was not a wood or a tile, it was just paint. Okay. It looks nice. I, I like it. I like how it all ties together. Good. Looks good. Um, so, if there are no other questions, uh, let's move on to the uh, to the AV components. Uh, Tim and, and Mike is would. Do you guys want to share your screen? Or is there anything you'd like me to pull up? Hey, Kyle, before we move on, I just, you know, I, I want to make sure everyone puts their feedback out here as far as council. I know not everyone agrees and we're not all going to agree on this, but if there are any glaring issues, I'd rather get out here in the public than um, have emails tomorrow or that. We meet every Tuesday. So whatever feedback you could give to Bowen now is, is helpful. I think it looks nice. I'd say I'm good with it too. It's nice. I, I do like the uh, the council chambers a lot better now than than I think was one of the original ones where everything was wood. Um, I think that was a little bit of an overkill on the wood. So I do like the the different um, components of it where you have the, kind of the you know quarter or third wood wall with the panel and the rest of the way up. So I think it looks very traditional and very professional. So I I, I like this this rendering a lot better. Mm -hmm. May I be recognized? Sure, Mary, go ahead. Uh, it, it looks absolutely beautiful. And it's it's so in style now with the white and the, uh, uh, it's almost like a light oak. Um, question I have is about the lighting, um, the natural lighting. Will that, will will there be, how does how is that gonna work? The natural lighting of like, you know, from the front over there, that's gonna be, will anything come inside our council chambers? So you'll have a little bit of light coming in. I don't think that it's it's set far back enough that I don't think you're going to get any direct glare. Uh -huh. um, so just to kind of give you an idea, you can see, i uh, change the view a little bit. But you can see how, how the light's coming in it. This is about one o'clock. Um, in the afternoon. Uh -huh. And so as we kind of move through. So uh, real quick, uh, this is Alan. Uh, right, so one thing to keep in mind is that's the east elevation. So the 
the only time you would probably get uh, any any kind of flare, which would be in the back of the concentrators, would be really early mm -hmm. um, in the morning, probably in the winter, when when the the angle of the sun uh, is low. Um, so by by afternoon, it should be higher and and towards the south, which mm -hmm. in this direction. Yeah. 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 Now it will be brighter than the rest of the room uh, because of the natural light. Uh, but as far as direct uh, sunlight, I, I think it would be pretty difficult for it to come directly all, all the way into, let's say, the dais from the front side. Nice, very nice. All right, thank you. Does anyone else have anything about the design itself? Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the audiovisual then. All right, Tim and Mike, um, is there anything that you'd like me to show on the screen or would you be sharing your screen? Uh, would anybody prefer to see the document that was sent versus this? Uh, because I think this will be instructive as we go through, but we can certainly show that document instead if that's what people would rather see. No, I think leaving this angle and kind of showing us where stuff's going to go is more advantageous than looking at that the PDF file. Okay. Um, so the core of the system design is to make it as flexible as possible while also making it very user friendly. Um, Currently, right now, every seating position on the dais has a wired microphone. Currently, those microphones are not pushed to talk. We can definitely swap that out in the specification if the preference is for them to be pushed to talk microphones, but currently they are just hot mics all the time. Uh, each of the seating positions on the tables in the space have a microphone. I think I only have four shown right now, but I'll make the adjustment and make that five. Um, and the podium will also have a microphone. Uh, hardware in the floor box. In addition to that, we have four wireless microphone channels that'll be available to use within the space so somebody can grab a microphone and move around. Um, and we have eight speakers located within the ceiling. We zoned it out. I, I called it north and south in the document, but front and back of the room. Um, so you'll be able to adjust those manually. And that's partially just for the acoustics of the space. Um, we have the four monitors on the wall. Uh, I said they were 80 after talking with Bowen, we're adjusting them down to 65 inch. Um, the core of this is what's called the video matrix switch. So each of those four monitors on the wall can display a different image if you so desire to do that, um, or they can all display the same, that doesn't matter. Um, that's purely how you want to use it functionally. There are monitors on the dais itself that serve as confidence monitors for everybody up there so they can see what's going on. Um, however, all those monitors on the dais will always display the same image. They can be a different image from the other four that are within the space, but all five of them will always show the same thing. It's just a quirk of how the system was designed. We can definitely dive in and change that, but there is a cost implication to doing that. Um, the system itself is controlled by two 10 inch touch panels, one of them located on the dais itself and the other would be on the uh, wall behind. And the idea for those is to basically make it a single button operation. You can come in, you can hit a button, the system will go to court mode, the screens will boot up, the microphones that need to be hot will go hot, um, you can do console mode, et cetera, et cetera. So you can have scenes that the system will readily recall at a single button push. Additionally, you'll be able to dive in and do further control outside of the single button recalls. So if you want to manually adjust microphones, you can do that. System mute, change source, all that's available. These screens also allow you to preview any source. So if somebody's at the podium and they want to do uh, some sort of an image or a presentation, you'll be able to preview what that is before you put it out to the system itself. And the idea with all of this is to give you guys control of any video that goes into your system uh, to make sure that somebody can't just toss something up there that you don't want them to. Uh, it has to go through you guys first. Um, just kind of going through the pieces. Uh, at the start of this Zoom call, we saw a very good example of uh, acoustic echoes through microphones. Um, 
at the heart of the system on the audio side is a digital signal processor, and it's been specifically chosen to eliminate that echo, uh, those echoes, and so you won't get that feedback through the system. Um, and I mentioned a matrix switch. That's the heart of your video. That's also your control processor. So that's really the heart of everything. Uh, the touch panel controllers. Um, and we have a streaming media processor in there. So this serves dual function. It's both a recorder and a streaming processor. So these sessions, when they're done actually back in the space, um, you'll be able to record them. You'll also be able to send them out live over the internet by utilizing this. Uh, microphones and speakers, because this is primarily going to be a voice space where it's people speaking, this isn't really a space where you're going to have musical you know, performances or things like that. The speakers and the microphones are based around vocal and voice lift as opposed to musical. So you might look at them and say, well, I have better you know, sound system speakers. That's intentionally chosen that way to perform better for speaking as opposed to you know, performances. And that's kind of the you know, 10,000 foot view of the space, just kind of a rapid um, you know, going through it. Are, are there any questions on how things function? I, I was trying to keep things you know, pretty simple and make sure I went through it as you know, no jargon, basically. So I, I'm open to questions, criticisms, anything you guys want to see change from this. Um, I'd love to have a discussion on it. Um, uh, thanks. Yeah, go ahead, Mary. Thank you. Um, I have two follow-ups. One, um, you mentioned the, the touch to speak versus not. Mm -hmm. Can you just give us some pros and cons of those? Uh, sure, absolutely. So having a hot microphone all the time, um, I mean, the obvious con is you can have a hot mic situation. You could have a side conversation uh, between people up there that wasn't meant for public consumption and the microphone picks it up and it goes out through the system. Um, a push to talk mic would alleviate that um, because you have to actively say, yes, I want to speak through this microphone and have what I'm saying go out through the system. The obvious downside to that is it's more of an active thing. You have to you know, consciously hit that button when you want to speak as opposed to just leaning over and speaking through the microphone itself. So I guess I meant beyond that, like more about reliability. Oh, um, I don't think there's any, I've never heard of any difference in terms of reliability. I mean, you know, buttons can break and maybe that's your single point of failure, but I've really never heard anybody tell me that a push to talk mic will break more frequently than a, a you know, a standard desktop mic or anything like that. It, it and, and as well, most of the microphones, if a push to talk mic does break, usually they're built in two pieces. You have the microphone, the, the gooseneck microphone itself, and then the bass and you can swap out the bass for another push to talk bass and it'll work. Um, and then my other question is about these screens uh, for council to see, they seem awfully high and I'm just curious if they would block them from view and then could an alternate be taking one of those front screens and turning it towards them. And if, if that would be the case, would they be able to see it? um as clearly um i know bone and i are still working on the exact sizing of those screens that'll go on the dais um we can certainly look into alternative options for it um as far as heights and mounts and things like that um but yeah we can get into that a little bit more uh bone did you guys have any insight on those screens was the question, can, can the monitors on the wall be turned towards council as opposed to individual monitors? Well, they're not individual. You have four there, and I get why, because you don't necessarily need every single one. But I'm curious if just in the alternative, you could have a screen facing them. I just don't know if it would be big enough on the wall. Um, but I think the arm will allow it to turn, right? Yeah. yeah. It should go 180 degrees. It, the problem with that is then the front half of the audience doesn't exist. Unless you leave one, turn the opposite direction. Okay. Sorry, I just, I'll turn it over to city council. But at, at, 
Hey, Ron. Uh, it's a good comment about the height. The only problem is walking under it. Um, so what, most likely what these will do is probably rotate down so they're viewed more perpendicular. Hey, Ron. Yeah, go ahead, Andy. On the two screen, on the four screens on the side, the two up front towards the dais, couldn't you? Well, there you go. Couldn't you put like two more facing, kind of what Katie's saying, but have the two there up there now facing out to the audience, but put two behind them, one on each side, facing the council. Let's see why not. It just may look like cluttery on the wall then. I mean, if you want to if you want to use the arm to kind of close the screens down to have a more clean look, you're not going to have that option. Um, Mike, thank you so much for that. Just a couple of questions I have. Um, what do you recommend as far as the push to talk or is it just simply a preference? It's simply a preference. I've had uh, school boards and city councils tell me both ways. Absolutely, I need it this way or absolutely I need it that. So it's just down to how you guys would prefer it. Performance wise and reliability wise, there should be no real difference between them. Okay. And then as far as uh, recording our um, sessions, right now we have someone that comes in and manually, you know, brings a camera, sets it up, tears it down. Where is the recording equipment going to be in this room for recording our uh, council meetings? Actually, I'm glad you brought up the camera because the camera is not something that we have in our system design currently. We have a place at the rear of the room that somebody can connect their camera to the system and it would feed into the reporter and the streaming processor. Um, but all of that recording equipment actually lives in the system rack that is uh, tucked kind of at the rear of the dais. Um, where that wall juts out, there's actually a rack that'll be tucked back there and all that equipment will live there. So there's nothing that's um, gonna be hardwired into the room for the recording. We're still gonna have to have someone do it. it. Not currently, but if there's a desire for us to add a camera to this design and have it permanently installed, we can go down that road. Um, I, think that, I think that makes, so I think that makes sense to do that as opposed to, you know, continuously, you know, paying someone to come and they do a great job. Don't get me wrong, but um, to continuously come in and do it when we're already building out a, a, a facility for that, I think that just makes sense. Okay. Um, and you know, wherever you guys feel is best to put it, I don't think it matters a, a, a whole lot. You guys would know that. Um, as far as the monitors go, um, I definitely see where the mayor's coming from with those monitors up on the various themselves. It does make it, it is more kind of cluttered up there. What is the distance from the um, where we're sitting up there to the back of the room where the clock is? What is that distance? I'm gonna pull up the... Hey, you guys have plants. Oh, yes. <laughs> Beautiful. It, it's about fifty feet. It's fifty feet for the whole building or for the whole room, so it's a little bit less. It's about eight feet less. 40, 40, 42, feet. 42 feet from the podium to the back wall mm -hmm. okay so what if instead of instead of you know putting up those other arms is there a, is there a way to mount screens in that open space to the to the left and the right of the logo in the back of the room would you have enough space to have screens that are large enough to put there on the white space between the windows mm -hmm. correct that might be another option as opposed to having them on the, I don't know, I don't know if that's too far or if that's, if they wouldn't be big enough to be able to see them. It's, uh, uh, so you're, you're talking about for council to see, right? Or anybody on the data? Yes, sir. Correct. Uh-huh. Yeah. So the, the important thing to remember is you're, you're going to be looking at detail most likely and that's okay. too far. Okay. That, 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 and, that, and that's kind of what I figured, but I thought that would be another option as well. So. Anyone else on council have any questions for Bowen or for Mike? Yeah, oh. No, go ahead. Just one question about with the technology and up um, where council sits, just how many um, outlets or where are, are there enough outlets where not like 
you know, having cords all across if everyone ends up needing to plug in because we have our own individual laptops now too. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, just had a quick question about that. Are you talking power or network with that question? Power. Both. Power, okay. Well, yeah, mainly power, I guess. So network a little bit, but mainly we use Wi-Fi. So um, just the power. Okay, uh, I don't have the power plans in front of me. Um, I can say on the network side of things, each seat does have its own dedicated connection. Okay. So at the least, uh, and we kind of spaced them so there isn't a face plate at each. It's kind of a, a plate between seats, so they share. Um, I would guess we have the power, but do you guys have the power plans, Bowen? So there's, there's one for each seat. Yes, yeah, so, so there's one outlet for each seat. Okay. Okay, thank you. May I be recognized? Yes. Thanks. Um, one thing that might seem a little minor, but I just want to make sure you're aware of it. Um, you mentioned the podium, and I think I read in the AV specs that there's some sort of jack um, outlet in the front of the um, dais. Um, when we have our normal council meeting, the podium, or the, I'm sorry, the lectern in the front is typically angled on the side, and that's so both council, members of council, and also members of the audience, and also for camera purposes that everyone can see the speaker. So in other words, that their back is not to the audience and the camera. So I just wanna make sure that wherever that um, microphone for the lectern is gonna hook in, that it's conducive to wherever we want to move that podium without it being a tripping hazard in the front. I, I'm. It looked from the rendering that maybe there's like a like a little bit of an overhang in front where the cord could run there if necessary, but I just wanted to make sure that was um, in the back of your minds. And um, so we, Ron brought up the whole thing with the camera. I, I really, I mean, I've been saying this, you know, from the get go, I really do believe that we should be looking into the automated cameras. I mean, other cities have these systems we had one person who filmed our uh, meetings for decades and um, you know, just retired basically. Um, in addition to paying someone, which I, I know that we don't pay them a whole lot, I don't think we can be confident that we're gonna necessarily be able to always have someone available who's willing to do this. And the other advantage to having the built-in cameras is all of our meetings should be uh, filmed and live streamed. Planning Commission, um, Board of Zoning Appeals, um, and with the automated system, we're ensured that we have the capability of always having the ability to uh, be able to live stream our meetings and also tape them. I don't know if other people on council wanna weigh in on that, but I'll just work through the rest of my list I'd just like to weigh in. Um, you know, as far as recording, I agree that it's something that should be built into it. And it's the first time here tonight that it wasn't uh, part of this. So um, it makes sense to do it right from the start versus going back and rebuilding it in. Thank you. Um, regarding the video monitors, um, just a general question. They're only going to be used when there's a presentation, correct? Um, you can, I mean, yes, uh, you could use them however you wanted if you wanted them to default to just like city logo or something like that when there's not something actively being presented that could be done. Um, but yes, they'll, they'll really only be used when something's actually being presented. Okay, so what, do we know what the, uh, what is the size of the monitors that are proposed for up for the council members? On the dais itself? We're looking in the neighborhood of, I think it's 22 to 24 inches, so around the size of a standard computer monitor. Okay, because I, I do understand what the mayor's saying from the perspective that we're looking at it right now, it looks like it might be blocking like the view of our, who, who's ever up there, the, the faces. Um, but I guess when I really look at it, the chairs really don't look that high. 
So I'm just wondering if there's a way, um, not tonight necessarily, but um, to try and figure out like, you know, where we would end up like that our, that the public who's there in the audience would be able to see us over those um, video monitors. Cause when you mention the, the actual measurement, it actually doesn't even sound that big. Yeah, they're, they're not overly large. And in my head, I envision those monitors on the dais, uh, while they're shown in the render as being vertical, they'd actually be more at an angle. So okay. they would truly really be, you know, uh, sitting all the way up like that. They'd be more kind of in oh, line. So angled back where the top is angled towards the audience. Maybe. Correct, yes. Okay, that, that, ma that makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, let's see. Do we, are there other cities in the area who are using this particular system and they're pleased with it? Um, not that I, not that I know of off the top of my head. I know um, the uh, Dayton City Schools, their school board, I did a very similar system design for it and they seem to be pretty happy with it. Um, trying to think of some others off the top of my head, but I've done very similar systems to this in a lot of places and I've never really had any complaints about the way it's functioned. Um, I, I intentionally chose all the parts for it to be very flexible. And a big part of this design process is once the contractor is chosen, they're required to speak with you guys as the end client and make sure that the programming matches your desire. So how all these pieces fit together and all the little you know, pieces that really set a system apart actually work will ultimately be up to you guys. I'm not gonna tell you how this system needs to function. It's your house, your rules. So I'm just giving you the pieces to make that happen. Okay. And um, so there's five, so that means we're sharing monitors? Correct. Okay. And um... I don't know if we got any feedback, Mayor, from Chris on the specifications because he would be our expert who would provide that. And personally, I'd like us to at least consider the push to talk. Um, sometimes there are, you know, I don't know, like someone's having difficulty with something or you just ask a quick question of your colleague and you know now when that happens, we literally have to take our hand and try and cover the microphone, which I know we're not even supposed to mess with the top of that microphone. Um, so I'd like us to at least consider it, um, the push to talk. I, I think it's something that would be relatively easy to get used to. Um, you know, maybe in the beginning, you know, we would, it would take a couple of tries before um, it's automatic, but I, I think it's something we should at least consider and um, let me just make sure. Oh, the outlets, you mentioned one outlet. It, it, is that gonna be like one plug or an outlet with two plugs at each spot? Uh, well, they're looking that up. I did, uh, something popped in my head about the microphones. Uh, one other option is as, as opposed to push to talk microphones, we could also have mics that have a mute button on them. So they're hot all the time. You hit that and then it'll mute. You hit it again and it unmutes. So that's an option as well. Okay. And I, I think that works too. Um, let me just go through my list here. Just make sure I got everything. I think that was it. Um, I, my other question was, you know, was just, have we looked at other systems, but that was really coming from the perspective that I wanna make sure that we have the automated recording. I think that's very important that right from the beginning, we're getting the latest, most updated technology that's gonna carry us well into the future instead of having to go back and make changes. So those are all my questions. Thank you very much. Welcome. And on the camera front, I already have a couple of products in mind. So I'll chase those down and check, uh, pick one that suits this the best. And, and along that line, Mike, I know that, you know, haven't gone down this road a lot, but um, in your estimation, is one camera enough or is it going to be something where we have to have, this seems like an awful big space just for one, for one camera. So I'll answer your question with a question and that's what do you want to get out of the camera feed itself? Are we looking for just general coverage of 
the space and you know moving around as it needs to to focus on the speakers or are we looking to really get into the details of the camera feed you know because if it's just a general coverage we can probably pretty effectively do this space with a single camera and we'll choose one it basically would be something like electric capture camera from a college is in the vein of where we'd be looking where it would move around to follow the speaker or you know kind of snap to whoever's talking but if you really want something you know higher fidelity than that then we probably need to look at multiple cameras and those multiple cameras how uh, would it have to be manually controlled by somebody then or would they can you automate those as well um i'll need to look into that more i think they can i know that you can automate them but i'm just not sure what degree they can be automated to um, if you're really looking for fine control, then you're probably going to want to have somebody running those cameras all the time. If it's something that still a little more general, then they can probably be run on automated mode. From my perspective, I think like a lecture camera, you know, for like, you know, like in a large lyceum type classroom would, would be kind of what we're looking at. I don't know that we really need to have more covers than that. Basically, the whole idea behind it is to be able to record it and get the information out to the residents and to the other, you know, other people who are watching this. And as long as we've got it, as Mrs. Pucci just said, the, the you know, latest camera that we can use, I think I would think that one would be enough. I'm not an expert in this field, but I mean, we're not looking for like, you know, we're not doing a, you know, a TV, like a, you know, law and order TV series here. It's just, it is just to get the information out there and to make sure the coverage is, is correct. Sure. And by virtue of the way the system designed, the uh, audio is coming in in a separate stream. Any other video that's being fed in and the camera are all different streams and being fed into the recording and streaming processor independently. So they're remixed once they hit the recording and streaming processor as opposed to having to worry about, you know, uh, catching what the presentation was through the camera or worrying about the audio feed from the camera. They'll all arrive at the streaming processor independently of each other and then be recombined there. That's great. All right, thank you. May I be right, you. Yes, go ahead. So regarding the camera, I certainly don't know the different technologies behind it, but basically I think they're voice activated. And I think the important thing is that, you know, it needs to basically zoom in on whoever's speaking, whether that's one of us up front, uh, a member of the public who's addressing us in the beginning of the meeting, one of the directors, I, I think that capability is very important, but in my personal opinion is I don't think we want to get into the situation where we have to have someone actually operating the cameras because that really defeats the purpose of automated cameras. Are, are you familiar with other city councils that have the automated cameras? A lot of the ones I've crossed paths with honestly usually have a fixed focus camera just kind of cover in the space. So uh, you're taking it another step as far as an automated camera that would follow the speaker around. Though I think that is the trend and that's where everybody's going to end up going. It, it is. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, does anyone else on council have any questions for uh, either Mike or for Bowen? I had one quick design question. Um, just because council is up on a platform, is there a, a ramp? Um, to get up there, or is it only steps on both sides? I couldn't couldn't really tell. It's steps on both sides. So there's steps over here, and then sort of around the corner, there's steps here. But you can ramp up through yeah, the, back the back door. So there's a door um, that kind of blends in with the panels, and there's a ramp back there that's accessible. To, to the session room. To the session room. Okay. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? All right, well, thank you so much, everybody. Um, it looks it looks fantastic, and I'm, I'm really excited about seeing it all start to come together. So, um, Mayor, is there anything else that we needed to add before we sign off from your end? No, thank you uh, for making time tonight. Sure thing. All right, thanks everybody. We'll be in touch soon. Have a blessed evening. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you everyone. Great job.